Hey, good evening, you guys. Hope everybody's doing well. Oh my gosh. You know, I always try and be such a happy ball of light. I have to, you know, admit to the world, like everybody who knows me knows I'm not a perfect ball of light. I am totally, man, I'm striving for balance, but often not always the balanced person that I appear to be. So, I have literally done four other videos for you guys over the course of the past two days and literally none of them were even viable for uploading. There was no audio all four videos. I've literally tried to get this message out to you guys like this is now the fifth time. Either it wasn't ready yet, and the father was like, no, I still have more that I want to give you, but, man, the negative side of that is just like, wow, man, they go through great lengths, great lengths, to stop the knowledge from being poured out. If this video doesn't work, I am going to freak out. Like, well, I'm not going to freak out, I'm going to pray, but, you know, <laughs> but like, Man, seriously. <clears throat> so, you're going to have to forgive me. I totally am not using my medication anymore. I'm trying not to. So, like, I'm really, really antsy and, like, my anxiety levels through the roof. So, I'm trying to remain just as calm as possible. But, trying to get me to sit still is like asking a five-year-old to sit still after giving him candy all day. You know, it's not going to work. Um... But I'm going to use this all to my advantage in the future. This is all... See, I've, I have... I totally have ADHD, man. Like, I don't know. I've never been diagnosed with it. But anybody who knows me will tell you that I have the worst attention span known to mankind. And also, I do not sit still. I always have to be going for some reason. To get me to, out of my head and into my body is the hardest thing for the Holy Spirit to do lately. Just, uh, you know, I'll always be honest, 100%. I haven't always been honest in the past, either with myself or with others, but I prom promise you, I'll always be honest about anything. In the future, f future going, from where I started when I was, you know, when I, when I said, you know what, this is it, all the way or no way, it's all the way or no way. 100% truth and honesty, clarity, right? That's how it's got to be. Because I don't want to come on here and, you know, tell you guys, hey, look, you know, this is what I see in Scripture. This is what the Holy Spirit tells me, you know, and I want to share this with you. I can't do that if I'm going to be dishonest in any other aspect of my life. Integrity is a huge thing to the Holy Spirit. Very huge. So, you know, just know that I will always, you know, 100% guarantee I'll always be honest with you. And I just know, just know, <clears throat> excuse me, anything I bring out in Scripture, it is always in a study text. We are just discussing Scripture here, right? and uh, life experience and how it applies to the practical world. I can only do my best with the current understanding that I have given by God and by this world but through experience. You have different experience. You know, you can see things I can't. I can see things you can and it just works that way because it forces us to work together, which is the name of the game, together. So, I wanted to come on and I, I asked the Father the other day, you know, how do, I, how do I bring astrology to the modern Christian? This is a huge deal for me. I am die-hard Christian. No change in it. Christ died for our sins on a cross. He was dead, buried, and rose again three days ago. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale for, for, for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. He rose on the fourth day. 
technically, you know, why do scriptures say more than, you know, more than what we, you know, it's like that Mandela effect, man. Literally. It's like we've, it's like we've all got this Mandela effect thing going on from when we read scripture when we were children and when we read scripture once we, you know, came back to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So, man, I literally woke up flipped to some scripture, opened the Bible to it, and it literally, I wanted, I could have literally just dropped my Bible and just been like, okay, I'm done today. I don't want to do anything else. I just want to sit here and like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That is obviously never going to be the case. I literally, no. So, right now is a time of judgment and purification, cleansing, and repentance. This morning I'm given a scripture. It's uh, I opened the I opened the Bible to uh, I believe it was Chronicles. Oh, it was Chronicles. But I was given a uh, uh, cheese of peace. It's Second Chronicles chapter 29. It's Hezekiah purifies the temple. Um, this is something else I totally don't want to touch on this yet. Sorry, forgive me. Pardon me. So, what I did come across this morning was actually really, really intense. It, it blew my mind. Um, I would say it's, uh, let's start at 1 Kings chapter 22. And this is... Uh, the KJV, the KJV, 1 Kings chapter 22, we'll start at, uh, gosh, I like starting at the beginning of the chapter, but for the sake of this, this is in regards to Ahab and Jezebel in Jerusalem. Jezebel went against um, Elisha, or Elijah. This is when, this is like Elisha, you know, working with Elijah as Elijah was mentoring or, you know, Elisha was a Padawan at the time. There you go. Everybody gets Star Wars terms, right? So we'll start at uh, verse 20. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at uh, Ram Ramoth Gilead? Sorry, that's a, it's a, it's compounded even, so it's like, it's not even, you can't even look at it and go, oh yeah, break it down. No, you have to break it down literally as it's one giant word for Moth Gilead. And one said of, on this manner, geez, and the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. This is our omnipotent, omnipowerful, you know, man this is this is God telling a spirit one in his counsel as they all decided how they were gonna get Ahab who was a who was you know Jezebel married Ahab and made him king over Israel or over yeah it was Israel um, they built Astroth poles and you know they they forsook the God of salvation. They forsook their God and went chasing after other gods after their God told them he was a jealous God. And after what he had done out of his jealousy for Israel prior, even knowing their ancestors' plate and what they went through to get where they're at, they were all about it. So I get it. I get it, but 
do you understand what this means? Here, we'll get deeper. We'll get deeper. So, who shall persuade a Okay, so another instance of seers in the kingdom. Hold on, we'll get there, we'll get there. Hold on, hold on. I know, I know. Moreover, this is uh, Second Chronicles chapter 29, verse 23. This is in regards to Hezekiah building the temple. That's actually why I had that pulled up this morning. This is what the Father gave me waking up this morning. And it led me to purification, which is what I'm working on. See, when I, when I do things for you guys, when I do things for others, that's when I receive my healing. That's when I receive my word, my message. And it's only when we think about others that we're given by the divine what we need. Devils will give you things all day long. Do you really want that, though? Devils give things with strings attached. Our Father only asks for one thing. Just love others. Love yourself. That's the only string attached. Demons and devils give you things all day long, trust me. You have no idea. Trust me, you really don't want those things. They're just things. You are those things. You already have them. You already possess them within yourself. And you use your what your currency in heaven to receive here on earth. You don't store up your treasures in heaven. You don't you don't worry about monetary stuff. When you do things for money, I found that it's always over the next hill. It's always over the next hill. It's always the next hill. It's like free beer tomorrow will it's always today, so tomorrow never comes. So, you know what I mean? You're never going to get free beer. You're never going to get free anything in this world. So, moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes command the Levites to sing praises unto the Lord with the words of David and the Asaph, the seer. Okay, the Asaph. Here, let's pull that up real quick, actually. Um... It, the Asaph is the breastplate of the Levites. It's what they used. It, each, it had 12 stones on it, one of every precious stone. There's talk of a 13th, but I, we're going to leave that out of it. Ophicus and stuff is not in this yet. So, um, excuse me. Um, so, the Asaph is the breastplate, the chest piece of the priest. This is what they used for divination. They would cast these stones and they would read them like reading tea leaves, like reading chicken knuckle bones, like reading goat innards, you know. Our ancestors, Israel, Judah, they were two kingdoms north and south okay they had seers the prophets I know I'm getting to it right now the prophets were seers by the hand of God I don't need to defend God's word God said he will defend himself I have no I can't even I'm not big enough to only he can do that. And he needs no defending, trust me. His prophets were seers. That's how they did their... That's how they performed their purpose. The judges were seers. They could literally look at a man and tell you if they were lying or not. 
They were human lie detectors prior to the age of technology. Technology has just made us lazy. We just don't use our gifts anymore. Now we rely on our phones and our computers and everything to hold all the knowledge. Seriously. So, the ASAF. Asaph, Hebrew, to gather, is the name of three men from the Old Testament, the article related to the sons of Berachia, Barachia, and descendants of Koath, Koath, refer to the same person, Asaph, the father of Joah, Joah, and Asaph, the son of Berachiah. Barakiah, that's what his name is, Barakiah. The Gershonite. Okay, but SF. Collector, a Levite, one of the leaders of David's choir, inclusive, are attributed to him. Psalms of Asaph. All right. So you learn something new every day. <laughs> I didn't even know that it came from a person. Oh man, see, always learning stuff, always. Um, it took me to, it led me into Isaiah, not Song of Solomon, but it led me into Isaiah 47. And when I found there, I was like, ouch, you know, I, I literally, once I, when I, when Christ led me into astrology, I was actually, I was so weary about it. My mother taught me to guard my soul a lot better than that. You know what I mean? Like, I I felt like I was dabbling and, with, you know, hanging out with the devil. And Christ assured me that was not the case the whole time. I, I don't know. I felt like I was listening to the devil instead, like, literally. But it was the same voice. It did, it, I felt love still, you know? I didn't... Gosh, I didn't even know what love was then. But I had a knowing, like, I can't tell you, like, just, it's like intuition, you just, you know, but you don't know how you know, but you can't, you can't put it into words, but you just, that feeling that you know, you know, you guys know, I know you guys know, but, um, so I was led to Isaiah 47, I believe it was 13. Yeah, it was 13. So, thou art wearied in the multitudes of thy counsel. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. In the Old Testament, there were sorcerers and seers and sages and shaman of every culture. Just like in Christ's day when, well actually post-Christ, when the apostles were going around, especially in Acts, uh, books written by Paul and stuff. Um, maybe that's why those movies were, maybe that's why those videos didn't work. <laughs> okay, so... Um, gosh, there was a magician, a sorcerer in Acts. I can't remember his name to save my life, but I, though I know his name, I'm literally, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, the, he wanted, he wanted the Holy Spirit from, uh, gosh, I want to say it was Nathan, but no, it was like Peter or something. He wanted the Holy Spirit from one of the apostles. It might've been Mark. 
I can't remember the specifics, but he wanted the he wanted the Holy Spirit. He's seen the greatness of the power that the Holy Spirit had versus what his magic had. Okay, magic is illusions. If it's not done by the Holy Spirit, it's normally just illusions and tricks and smoke and mirrors, you know? Real magic is done with love. The transformation within that reflects without. That's real magic. It's called transmutation. It's a big word used in the Bible that we don't really you know, correlate anything to. Transmutation, yeah, we turn it from this into that. The evil that we lived in all of our life, we take it and we flip it around and we use it for good in this world instead. Well, so we're stargazers and everything there. You know, this told me straight up that I was putting too much faith. I actually opened my Bible to this one also. I was putting too much faith in astrology itself. That is just a blueprint of something God made. Just because you're looking at the blueprint. You know what the Father told me in regards to that? Just because you're looking at the blueprint, son? Remember, the future is unwritten. Destiny has been unwritten. You are in control of your destiny. It is in your hands. It is within you. It's not something you can look at on a sheet of paper outside of you. This is something that only is for you and you alone. And you have to discover it and find it each day on your own. Yes, astrology can be very helpful to help you find yourself, to find where, who you are versus what you've been programmed with all your life, school, your parents, your brothers and sisters, your friends, everybody telling you you should do this or do that because you're good at this, but you're not good at that. You should be this, you should be that. No, that is programming and emotional manipulation, I'm sorry. It is what it is, technically. So we'll call it by the names that they are. So, you know, to do this, you know, you gotta find who you are versus who the world has told you you are. I found astrology very helpful for that. I found a lot of things that resonated. I found a lot of things that didn't quite resonate. But the things that did resonate with me, I kept those. And the things that didn't, I didn't just discard them. I, I left it, I put it on the paper and I just... I left it to the side and just like, well, I don't know what that means yet. Maybe it's not for me now, or maybe it was, maybe it applied to something when I was a child. You know, it, it doesn't have to be 100% specifically on. It's supposed to give you an idea. It's supposed to trigger the, the, the start of something new. It's the seed that's planted of the potential of what it could be of what you could become and the good you can do in this world with it. That's what it's all about. At least that's what I see in it. I, I know this world's not always beautiful. And I know there's very few beautiful things in it. Especially in opposition to the great horrors and atrocities that are going on, you know, daily, that we see daily. We see suffering so frequently. We watch movies that promote it. Like, basically, horror films are legal snuff films for our children, for us. You know, I get it. We have a shadow side, and we got to keep that under wraps, so we feed it, you know, and we feed it in a healthy way. Is that really healthy, though? Is that really healthy for us? You be the judge. You're, that's for you. I just, I found that, man, I just can't do it anymore. I feel bad. You know, man, there's so many butterflies on the road. They're using butterflies to pollinate the fields now. I literally, it, I looked into the intersection as I sat at the light, and it was just butterfly bodies. It was yellow. The whole intersection, all four corners were just so littered with butterfly bodies that there was a four triangles in the road of yellow 
butterflies. It was it was incredibly sad. I was like, ouch, that that gets me, you know? Like how why does that get me? These are butterflies. They're what I would say insignificant, but what I that's what I would have said, you know, back gosh man, even a few months ago. It's crazy. But that's the kind of change that the Holy Spirit brings. Drastic change. For good. So, I'm offering complimentary free natal chart readings. I call them translations because those who came before me paved the way. And all I got to do is click buttons. Now, I don't have to draw up your chart and, you know, work it all out and do the math. and I don't have to do any of that. So I call it a translation, not an interpretation. Because I'm not interpreting anything. I'm just reading it and passing it along. So I call it a translation. I can take it from this and I can turn it into this and give you real material to work with. I'm not a professional. I have not a, you know, gone to any school for this. The Holy Spirit taught me on my own time. I am looking into finding astrologers that are reputable. I hear Molly McCord is amazing and I love her work actually she's a very very gifted astrologer and life coach mentor she's she's awesome she's got a good heart I can feel it I can feel it she's good people um, you, one one could say she had the Holy Spirit but you know that's that's actually something I always figured you know once people have divine union within themselves once they find themselves that they have you know, divine union with the Holy Spirit, but that's not necessarily true. You can have wholeness within yourself and still be lacking the Holy Spirit. You know, the or nobody's actually lacking the Holy Spirit. Thank you for correcting me. Nobody is lacking the Holy Spirit. Everyone has it. Are you consciously aware of what it is and what it sounds like, how it acts, what its attributes are within you? This is something I'm still learning. But it's all it's all just a learning experience. That's all this is. It's all a game. Enjoy it. There's so many negative things prevalent in this world that it's easy to get caught up on them. I was taking a test the other day and I, I have test anxiety. I've, I failed horribly in school and now it affects me as an adult because now I feel like I'm gonna fail at everything. Totally nails your confidence right there. You know, what's sexy in life? Confidence. It's one thing I feel like I like, confidence. So that's totally probably irrelevant to this, but I don't know, I'm all about being open. Holy Spirit says share. So, you know, hey man, if somebody can benefit, I'm happy. But I don't want to keep going on that. <laughs> so I was taking this test the other day and I totally, I got caught up on all the misinformation. Though I can do my job ins and out backward if I had to. Literally, I know the material. Give me a test on it, and literally I fail it horribly. So my children, my children and I were talking today, and we got to talking about just how, you know, just prevalent that the horrifying stuff is in the world. My son literally, my youngest son starts out telling me, you know, something cool, but then he goes, yeah, but I didn't get that for me. I got it for Isaiah, you know what I mean? So, like, that's the one I really wanted, but when I did it, I did it for Isaiah, so, you know, he, he talked himself down, he, he literally stole his own victory. He literally said, yeah, but I did it for Isaiah, it's nothing. I'm like, son, you achieved, granted, you know, you achieved it for your brother, but look at your achievement, son, you got it. You won it, you did it. You know what I mean? And you got the one that you wanted, you got to give it a try, and you know what the blessing was? You blessed your brother with it. You know what I mean? It, it, it was an experience for you to give and take joy in that. Love it. 
love your brother, love the fact that you got to give in that way. That's something you would have wanted and hoped for for yourself. You got to give it to your brother. You know, imagine how honored your brother feels, you know? That, you know, man, he really wanted this, you know, I got it. You know, he, he had to give it to me, like, wow. You know what I mean? So, you know, but he, what really bothered me, though, is that he stole his own victory from himself. He talked it down, didn't even acknowledge it, and only seen the negative in it. I was crushed. Crushed. Like, man, that's me right there. That's, that's what I did to myself my entire life. And that's what I taught my kids. Because I didn't wake up prior to having children. I went and made vessels in my ignorance. And though my father says ignorance is no excuse, so, you know, in life, you know, though we obtain the Holy Spirit, though we attain, you know, the things that we want internally, even if we made bad choices through the past, well, the present is about fixing those. And, you know, when you fix those, you plan for your future, you make a better future for yourself in that, in doing that. So, you know, just know that, you know, even if you've made a million mistakes, all your father asks that you just, you know, pay them attention. You know, he'll, he'll work with you to the point where you can start paying attention to them. And one by one, don't overload yourself, one by one, start making them right. Try to at least. Do as much as you can to make them right. Without overgiving, without making yourself a doormat, but to make it right. You don't have to sell your soul to anybody, but a simple apology is right. You know, hey, I have to. So, I don't know, the Holy Spirit's pulling back, so I think that's where I'm supposed to stop. It's, we're 32 minutes into it anyways, but, you know, I have more for you guys. I do actually, I am planning to go through Daniel chapter 8. I'm going to begin with the uh, prophecy of the ram. I'm going to move into prophecy of, uh, I believe it's Daniel 9, but it's it goes in through like chapter 12, I believe. I'm going to go through both of those. This is where astrology, you know, really begins to take root in prophecy. It begins to show the timeline in the astrological clock as to when Mashiach, Messiah, Christ, when Christ will come. And then how long after Christ comes that it will continue until Christ comes again. These are all astrological things, people. This is all done by the clock. Here, you know what? Before I go, I just want to share one thing for you. Just one more thing. And this one's totally me. I'm calling this out. I don't know. Holy Spirit might be, you know, totally just allowing it. But in Genesis 1, 1 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for the signs and for seasons and for days and for years. He differentiated days and years. See, time is linear measured to us here on earth, you know, but time is actually fluid everywhere. It's centrifugal. Everything flows. You can always travel back, you know, within yourself. You can always travel forward within yourself. Um, but then for signs and for seasons. So days and years measures one piece of time, physical matter time, this dimension of reality. Seasons measures a spiritual thing, a season, like what time is it spiritually? And then for signs is astrologically. This is in the heavens. These are signs in the heavens. But as above, so it is below. And it, it's reflected, see, as within, as without. Just as everything out there and up there, just as it's the great cosmos, you have everything. You are a mere micro-reflection of said universe. Everything out there is within you. You are made up of stardust, right? Stardust. 
stars, the light of stars, the very essence of what a star is, is the very core of your being. Think of the sun. Think of the universe, actually. Let's go bigger. Think of the universe spinning with everything in it. The, uh, we'll go the galaxy. The galaxy just spinning. Arms and everything. Everything within that galaxy is within you, too. I know it sounds crazy, but ask any physicist. Ask any microbiologist. They will tell you the same. That you could take one drop of any human's blood, anybody's blood on the face of this earth, Take one drop and you have the DNA code of every being. You can replicate every being that has lived or ever will live on the face of this earth by just any which drop of blood you choose. It has the makeup for everyone and everything in it. Trees, everything. Everything can come from one person's DNA. So if that is the truth, then it also has to be true that everything out there is within you as well trees, everything, the makeup for it, the actual blueprint, what it takes to actually create is within you. Down to the very molecule in quanta state. You know, we're like, you know, quanta is a measurement of how tiny. And you know, quanta is like the most minute, I believe, that we've encountered or that we can uh, interpret, translate. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to leave it with, you know, I'll totally leave it at Genesis 1.14. Let the sign, let the lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days, and for years. Next time, guys, we're going to move it into the uh, Daniel chapter 8. We'll go through up to chapter 12. And then, uh, shoot, we'll start taking it into Ezekiel. The wheels within wheels is going to get amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait to discuss this stuff with you guys. You guys comment, like, share. Um, oh, yes, sorry. And for natal charts um, or tarot readings, whichever, you know, if you guys feel that you'll benefit from any of the, you know, things that I have to offer, if you guys, it's free of charge. It's completely 100% free and no strings attached it's my gift to you so please shoot me an email at woods clinton c-l-i-n-t-o-n the number 62 at gmail.com uh, please put in the subject bar uh, complimentary or free natal chart reading um, if you would like a tarot reading just put it down in the comments below or shoot me an email as well if I don't mind just let me know that you want a tarot reading in the subject bar please so that I I have thousands of emails I am horrible about checking my mail so I like to just you know if this is you know something we're all gonna do together I just want to be able to find you I don't want anybody falling through the cracks you know nobody's to get lost in this I don't want anybody's request being you know forgotten it's not right so love and light you guys may you guys all be healed sealed guided and protected upon your path. In the divine ineffable name, and in Christ, bless you all. Have a good night.